This is a Humalog insulin pen, otherwise known as an auto injector. You select the number of units like that, and then what? if you depress the needle, see the insulin forming right there? Okay, this is known as short acting insulin. And this pen is used for people with diabetes to simulate the insulin from the human body to reduce blood sugar and store it in tissue. We have extracted, we have extracted from one of those pens, the glass, it's a borosilicate tube that's used as the internal three mil container to hold the insulin. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this blowtorch to lamp work the open end into a smooth droplet. And that's what the rest of the video is about. And then I've used a large paper clip like this and introduced a strategic kink so that it can go in the aperture on the front here, but disallows the glass from falling off without human pressure. We're gonna use heat from this propane blowtorch to heat up the glass here on this end and melt everything together and we're holding this with this vice grips because it's hot and we have to work it over the flame. This is called a flint striker. When you go like that, it produces 5,000 degree Fahrenheit burning mish metal. I'm gonna turn the propane on. And that produces a blue, white hot flame. Now we're going to turn this flame up and at first we're just going to gently heat the glass by stroking it over the flame because we washed the insulin out of the tube and we don't want to crack the glass so at first we're going to feather the glass just to gently warm it and heat it like this and what you're going to see is over time all the moisture you had inside from either the insulin or the water will evaporate And you'll smell a little bit of um, the residue from the insulin that was in there. That's perfectly normal. So what you're going for is you're just heating, this is borosilicate, so it's, it's resistant to rapid temperature change and it doesn't require annealing afterwards, which is convenient for what's called lamp working. And that's what we're doing here. And this is very similar to how lab glass and decorative glass is made. So. What we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat the leading edge to start with, like this, and we'll keep heating the body around it. And what we're trying to do is heat the edge as much as we can and allow gravity to pull a droplet. Now what you're seeing, that orange is actually from sodium atoms in the glass boiling off. And what that does is it produces the sodium atoms, absorb the heat energy, and then when they relax, they emit photons that are kind of an orange color. And what you can see happening here is the tube aper the tube end is, is getting smaller. It's okay, mate. And what we're going for is we're gonna heat all of the body by rotating the part. We're going to heat the body all the way around evenly. And what we're trying to do is pull a gravity defined droplet off the end. So just keep heating it at the tip of the flame where it's the hottest. Now this is going to take a few minutes, so be patient. The downside of using this large vice grips is that it weighs over a pound, so it's like holding a handgun in a cubby, but that's okay. It's also secure.
My glass has a very high surface tension, so it's going to ball up on itself. You notice it's getting thicker as we keep heating it. That's the idea. The tube walls will collapse and suck into themselves, so the tube length shortens and the glass starts to thicken. And what we're doing is we're using gravity to keep the heated section straight. This is art, so it's not a precision operation. We're not bonding anything or making scientific glass. We're making little decorations here out of a very high precision borosilicate auto injector tube from an insulin pen. This is an example of upcycling, something that's normally thrown away inside of a plastic housing. We actually recycle all the plastic and then recover this glass and ultimately this will probably be recycled someday too since it's made of glass. You can see how the orange light moves through to the end of the holder end where that small aperture is in the machine part. That's because light acts like a fiber optic. In fact, the original fiber optics weren't made of plastic polymer, they were made of thin spun glass fibers. And today some, that's what, some fibers are glass inside plastic. Those have the best optical performance. Boron is added to glass because the boron atoms get between the sodium and the silicon. And then when it cools, it, it strengthens by pre-tensioning everything so you don't get irregular tension in the glass, which is why normal glass has to go into an annealing furnace so it can relieve the tension. Now I'll, I'll heat the part like this back and forth when I'm closer to finishing. And we'll keep it, we'll keep the whole thing warm like this for a few minutes so that um, it minimizes the probability of the piece cracking while cooling. You just give the whole thing kind of a heat bath like this. And a propane cylinder like this can be refilled. I'll show that in another video. It's kind of a dangerous process. You can buy them for camping. They're not terribly expensive. This is a wider one that's typically used as a camping stove. They have thinner, taller ones that are used with blowtorches like this. This kind of blowtorch is typically used for uh, brazing pipes, like soldering copper pipes together in a home hot water system, in industrial pipes and commercial applications. We're using the combination of propane gas, which is a hydrocarbon waste product of oil refined. And it combines with oxygen in the air, and that's that blue part of the flame that you're seeing, is actually the combustion. And you notice there's no soot or anything, that's because propane very efficiently burns. It's one of the cleanest burning, like natural gas, um, and it's a very pure hydrocarbon. It boils at lower than room temperature, which is why it has to be stored under pressure in steel canisters at several hundred PSI. So that conveniently liquefies it. Similar to butane, butane has a slightly higher boiling point because it's a larger molecule. Propane has three carbons, so butane has four. So methyl, ethyl, butyl, propyl in chemistry. That's the number of carbons in their naming scheme. And O2 has two oxygens, and what, what, what it wants to do is form carbon dioxide. So what's happening here is the propane molecule, which is like C388, uh, eight, eight. what it, it wants to do is the hydrogen wants to combine with the oxygen to form water vapor. So there's water vapor being formed here. That's about 99.9% .9 of the emissions from this process. A little bit of CO is formed, a little bit of nitrogen oxides are formed here because the air has nitrogen in it. The blue color indicates very clean combustion, so it's actually not fuel rich. If we crank up the fuel more, it'll turn kind of a green blue color. That's less efficient than the lighter blue color. It, that's called fuel rich. It provides more BTUs of heating of your project, but it's not efficient. So this is an efficient burn. And you can see there's a, a, a droplet. That's what we're going for here. You can see it glowing red hot, and we're going to keep it hanging down so the droplet falls with gravity. So I'm trying to keep this vertical. And what we've got there is a very cool little piece of glass art that pulled up slightly asymmetrically for some reason. I like, I like it asymmetrical. But Meg, who I'm making this for, likes it asymmetrical, so that's okay. This is called a vice grip. You can see the patent number there. Craftsman made these, made in the USA. The way this works, is you can clamp down something in the end. Now you can adjust the closure of the end by screwing this. You can see the aperture gets tighter, or if you unscrew it like this, 
the aperture opens and you can adjust the aperture like that. And what we see here is you can adjust where it clamps like this. So what we're going to do is tighten it all the way down. It locks secure so you can move it around and it, it holds on to your part. 